Hi everybody. Today we're going to learn the three basic types of percent problems. We're going to learn how to recognize them and we're going to learn how to solve them. So let's get started. You're going to start off with this phrase a percent of b is equal to c and this a represents the percent b is the whole that you're going to take a percent of and c is the part that you're going to find. However, we're going to be looking for the different items a b or c type one is when we're looking for c the typical example you might see is find 15 percent of 42. this is what we'll do trying to find out the tax on something you purchase or maybe the tip to give it a restaurant the second type is when you're looking for the percent the typical example would be something like what percent is 17 out of 25. you got this mark on a test you want to find out hmm i wonder what my percent is and the third type is when you're trying to find what the original amount is. And this is a little less intuitive. It's usually looking for a bigger number. 5% of what is 64? You're looking for the B. B is a big number, and you're going to find 5% of it that would give you an answer of 64. So let's solve them. Finding C, find 15% of 42. We're doing A percent of B. The percent of the whole is equal to the part. Type one, what you're going to have to remember is you're going to change the percent to a multiply, percent to a decimal, and then multiply. So type one, I want you to remember you're going to have to multiply. Some students think that they're going to have to divide. That happens when you're using some of the tricks we've talked about already. So 0.15 times 42, you would work it out like normal and calculate 6.3. Hopefully you didn't make a mistake. You check it, is 15% of 42, 6.3, does it make sense, right? You have to just use your estimation skills and find out if, it, if it's the right answer. And by the way, it is the right answer. Type two is where we're looking for the percent. And it's going to be taking something out of something else. Notice you don't see what the percent is. It doesn't show that to you. So you're gonna say, a percent of B equals C, and this is the case where you're looking for the percent. You're going to put the part over the whole. In this case, the 17, let's say the 17 marks you got out of a test that's on 25. And we practiced this a few times. How do you change a fraction into a percent? I'm not going to go all the details, but if it goes into 100, life is a little bit easier because you can just do it by equivalent fractions. Otherwise, you would have to divide the bottom by the top and get the, uh, sorry, the top divided by the bottom and then multiply by 100. In this case, though, we get our answer. Whoops, it's going to come up here right away, 68%. Good enough. You double check. Hey, is 17 out of 25, 68%. Does that make sense? Type 3. This is where you're finding the whole. You're going to be finding the large amount that you're taking the percent of. So percent of the whole to find the part. But I don't know what the whole is. And so the reminder I have here is you're going to divide by the percent in decimal form. So remember, for type 3, you're going to divide. In type 1, you're going to multiply by the percent. In type 3, you're going to divide by the percent. In this case, 5% of what is 64, you're going to take that 64, divide it by 0 0.05, and remember, when you divide by a small number, you're going to get a big number. You would do the long division, you go the 0.05 into 64, slide the decimal over two places, slide the decimal over two places, and put it up on top, fill in the zeros, and your answer is going to be 1,280. Does it make sense? Think about it for a second. You're taking 5% of 280 and your answer is going to be 64. So you sort of check this out and see that it works. We have to do lots more examples than this where we have situations set up and you're going to have to determine, hey, am I looking for the A, the percent? Am I looking for B, the whole? Or am I looking for C, the part? And every time, use your estimation skills to make sure it makes sense to you. Have a good day.